What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Guys, we have a fresh new setup. My camera guy's been helping me out with kind of more or less changing the aesthetic of the entire show. So we got a really awesome episode for you guys today. Today what we're gonna talk about is what not to say to these seller clients that you guys are cold calling on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, believe me guys, when I first started, I can't tell y'all how many times I messed up. It's happened to me more times than I can count where I just said the wrong thing. I said the wrong thing in the wrong way, or I said the right thing at the wrong time. And your ability to be able to analyze these things is what's gonna help you guys close more deals. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. I'm gonna see you guys after this intro. As always, we got a fee for y'all. Everybody that watches this show, all I ask is that you like, subscribe, share. We don't run any ads. We don't do anything crazy. We know that we could. But I've, I've never run a YouTube ad, not once. It's never happened to me. And, and all we ask, guys, is that y'all show love. If you get value from this, which I'm sure that you will, that you, you, you make sure that you share it and you tell other people about it. All right, guys? I'll see y'all after the intro. Let's get it. You see the leaves fall off. You thought the family tree would die. But these roots run deep below ground zero. That's the vibes. This never dies. No one knows how this all started, they just see us flex online You play chess, we built the chess, but every move you make is mine And I know that's hard to hear But that's what God is here I got too much paper in my phone, that's facts, they just can't leave me alone. So the number one reason why people fail in this business is because they don't understand what not to say <laughs> And I know that sounds crazy, but this happens more times than I can count People get a little confident on the phone or maybe they think that the seller is, is in rapport and they're in sync. And yeah, granted, this is a relationship business. However, when you lose the rapport that you made because you said something wrong, or maybe you overcommitted, guys, those are things that could really lead to little bombs exploding, little problem bombs exploding as you gravitate further into the lifetime of the deal. And so guys, we have what's called a lifeline, all right? And for you guys that are really just getting into this business, you'll understand what this is as you get your first contract, as you get your first client who's wanting to sell their property, and as you move in to talking to your first title company, these are all things that you're gonna experience. And I want y'all to learn from these mistakes because I fucking made them. I made them and it happens, okay? So just be, be, be um, completely aware that you're going to make mistakes and that's okay. All right, but that's how we get better. We don't let those mistakes define us. We overcome them, we get stronger, we realize our mistakes, we fuck up and we learn and we keep on consistently get going after the things that we want in our lives, okay? And so guys, the lifeline of the deal, for my guy who's editing this video, throw a little lifeline in front of me if you can. And uh, the lifeline of the deal is, number one, you find the prospect. They say they're interested, that's where it starts a bunch of follow-up and rapport building and consistency with the client leads to an executed agreement. That's the second part of this lifeline. You get the contract signed. The third part of this is taking it to the title company. Once it's at the title company, now you begin the disposition process. That is where you are finding investors who buy properties. During this time frame, title is doing the work, right? Once the buyer's locked in, the next step is the assignment of contract. After this, everything is scheduled to close. The seller meets with the title company, signs their part. Buyer meets with the title company, signs their part. And this is the final part, guys. This is the close. This is where you get paid. And the title company closing attorney issues you your check, right? But you never get past stage one and stage two if you don't understand these things right up front. So these are the top five things that you should never do when you are making the offer, when you're talking to the client, when you're putting a property under contract, and I guarantee it, if you stick by these laws, you will not mess up, you will not lose money, and you'll make a lot of money doing this stuff, okay guys? Which is my goal for you. If you're watching this channel, I want you to make a lot of money. So just make sure that you're paying attention. The number one thing that I see people mess up with, especially in the beginning, is they get this giant list of quote unquote, they get it from a contractor that says, oh, well, this is how much work the property needs, or this is how much money that it's gonna cost to fix something. And so when they get on the phone, right, 
they get somebody who says they're interested in selling. Don't lead with this, okay? You want the seller to throw their story on the table with you because that's how you're going to make your mark in this business. You want them to throw their story on the table. The moment that you start getting into, let's say, an interrogating moment, do not do that. A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll say, hey, okay, well, oh, you're interested in selling. Great. Well, how about this? Um, can you tell me how much work the property needs? Do you, when was the last time you updated the floors? When was the last time you changed the roof? When was the last time you messed with the AC unit? When was the last time you updated the electricity? How old is the electricity? What kind of cabinets do you have? What kind of silverware is in the drawers? You see what I'm saying? Guys, when you start doing that, you take away a massive, massive, massively powerful part of the entire negotiation aspect. Being able to build the relationship, you're never going to do it when you're interrogating the seller. So do not interrogate your sellers. You're literally pulling for information, yes, but you're doing it incorrectly. You have the right idea, but you're going to mess up and you're going to lose the deal. A lot of deals when you do it this way. Switch things around and try this, okay? This is the correct way. Well, okay, you're interested in selling your property? That's great, man. Well, look, man, uh, when, when was the last time you buy the house? When was the last time, like how long, how long ago was it that you bought the house? Wait for them to say the answer? Wait for them to give you some type of idea or a timeline of when they first bought that property? Because then you can kind of get an idea of how long they've lived there. Because we don't know how old these things are. But if they say they bought the property 20 years ago, I'm going to assume that they haven't fully updated it in a long time. But this is a probing question so that they can start telling me the story of the house. And this is how you gauge the quality of the way that you build rapport with your client. Okay? If you don't like that approach, try this one. Mr. Seller, how about this, man? I, I would love to make you an offer on your property. If I were to give you $20,000 to fix the house right now, man, can you tell me what are some of the first things that you would fix in that house? Now I'm reverse engineering this process. I'm letting them tell me what's wrong with the property and I am no longer interrogating them and it doesn't become a script in front of me or a questionnaire or a robotic thing that I'm doing. And that's where I see a lot of people mess up. So don't interrogate, that's number one. Number two, number two, never be the first person to give price. If you can stay away from this, you will make a lot of money, I promise this. Because the last thing that you want to do is disrespect what someone else wants. Especially if they wanted $10,000, $20,000 over asking. You may be not that far off, but they got to that number. What if you gave them a number, right? Let's say you gave them a number, you said $60,000. And they're like, oh man, my house is worth a lot more than that. Man, that's just disrespectful. Fuck you, dude, I'm going to hang up on you. And they hang up on you and boom, there you go. Guys, never be the first person to give price. That's called price gouging. When you price gouge someone, you're already creating it in their mind. You're creating this law in their mind that they cannot trust you because you're lowballing them. You never want to be the guy that is lowballing somebody. That's why when we're calling people, we say we give fair offers. Fair offers means I'm giving you the cash equation of what an investor would pay for your property. Whether you're wholesaling, buying, buy and hold, creative finance, lease option, whatever strategy it is that you're using as you're watching this channel, I want you guys to understand this. That's where a lot of people mess up. They give the price first. It's best if you ask, well, look, man, how about this? If I could close in two weeks, two weeks, you can give a timeline, but make sure that you're being realistic, which is going to be something I'm going to go over right now. And this is going to be imperable. Uh, I mean, uh, this is going to be extremely essential for you guys that are making offers, okay? Only say something that's within your power. No matter what, I'm never going to overpromise, underdeliver. Because when you do that, you lose power in the transaction. So I say two weeks. If you need 30 days, say 30 days. Don't copy my two weeks. If you need three weeks, say three weeks. If you can do it in seven days, then say seven days. But know that you have to have the systems, the processes, the money lined up, the title company, the capability to be able to perform on this. Too many fucking wholesalers I see in this business over-promising, under-delivering. And you're never going to have longevity in your company when you're doing this. That's in any business, okay? So give a realistic timeline. I'll tell you what, Mr. Seller, if I could close you out within 30 days and I could pay all cash and I could cover closing costs, 
I could help you with moving expenses. I could help you find a new place. These are things that are within my power. These are things that I do. Can you do those things too? Ask yourself that question. If not, you may need to get more resources. If I could close you out within that timeline, man, what is the least amount of money that you would want to walk away from from this property? That, my friends, is called price gauging. That is where you're gauging the price level of where they're at. And if they give you the number first and you weren't that far off, boom, you got a deal. You see what I'm saying? And you can guide yourself into that because now you're giving them that power. And now it's, is this a deal for me as an investor at the price that they want it at, given the condition of the home? After that, you can use other things to price anchor, which is different. When you price anchoring, that right there is me saying, well, look, you've owned the property for 20 years because we, we, we didn't interrogate. We got that information because they willingly told us. Uh, you told me that these were the last things that you, that you wish you could fix up, right? You said you needed to replace the floors and all that other stuff. Well, man, what if I were to buy your property as is? Could you give it to me at a specific price? I know you wanted 80000 man, but I'm like closer to seventy. Maybe meet me in halfway. See what I'm saying? Guys, when you're doing that, now you're gauging your price levels of where you can go, how low you can go, how high you can go, and you have your maximum allowable offer already fitted into your equation because you've outlined the process. That's why it's so important, guys, to not say the wrong things. I'm sorry, to say the right things. And, and also to not say the wrong things because they guide you to the things that you should have said. The third thing here, if the price is right, and you get your offer, let's say they give out your number, they, they, they said they're willing to sell at $100,000 and that's exactly what you can give them. Don't give them that. Don't do it, I promise you that. If you're quick to jump on somebody who wants exactly what it is that they're asking for, you are losing so much power in the deal. Meaning that you are going to let this guy know that he's giving you a deal. When somebody realizes that they're giving you a deal or a discount on their property, they're gonna go and look to see if maybe, well, maybe I told this guy I'd be willing to sell my property for less. And you already messed up. It's hard to come back from that. Believe me, it's happened to me so many times in this industry where I, somebody said they would accept a number and so I gave them that number. And when that happened, they took what I said that I would give them because that was the price that they wanted and they knew that they could get more after that. And they fucking went to my competitors and they put the property under contract offering more than I offered and they never called me back. So guys, if they say that, you, that they'll do $100,000 and you know that you're at $90,000 or even you could meet them at the 100, this is where you make the opportunity to drop that price down even further, guys. I always say, well, how about this? Can I do $98,265.36? That's a ridiculous number but there's psychology to not using round numbers. He's gonna say, well, how come you can't just give me what I'm wanting? Well, look, Mr. Seller, let me tell you this, okay? Before I gave you this offer, me and my team, we really had a talk about this conversation. And, and, and we both determined and did our numbers and put pencil to paper that this is the exact amount of money that we're willing to give you and we're not far off. And to be honest, Mr. Seller, we're not only willing to give you this, but we'll cover the closing costs. We're right there. Can you work with us? Now, guys, we're talking. You see what I'm saying? At this point, he's gonna do the deal with me whether because he liked me or because I said the right things. And guys, I promise you, if you give somebody exactly what they're asking, they're gonna run in the other direction because they're gonna assume that you're a fucking sleazeball and they're giving you a deal when they could be getting more money somewhere else and you lose the entire transaction and that's not what I want to happen to you guys. So make sure that you're never the first person to give the price. Let the client say the price first. If you absolutely have to, drop a number. If somebody says they want a million dollars, Look up how much their property is worth on the appraisal district and bada bing, bada boom. You'll know if they're bullshitting you, right? Give them a realistic offer. Say, hey man, look, I'm a serious buyer. I know you say you want a million bucks. Your property is only worth 150K, my dude. I'll tell you what, man. When you're serious and you want an actual offer, call me. Because right now I'm sitting at about 75, 80K. Give them half of the appraisal. See what I'm saying? And that's how you kick back and you rebuttal against somebody who's also being a dick. So remember this, guys. Hold your integrity. Say the right things right? Make sure that you are connecting and that you're allowing for the seller to have more power than you usually do. If you start interrogating, you start throwing out prices, 
you're giving people a reason to walk all over you and you're not giving yourself the, the benefit of creating that rapport because that's what's really going to get you the deal. People are going to do a deal for you for three reasons, okay? Number one is the service that you provide. Number two is the impression that you give them. And number three, which is the least important because people will sacrifice equity. Number, number three is cash, guys. Cash. Service, impression, cash. That's the name of the game, okay? And if number one and number two are impeccable, completely, no one else can do it, you have absolute rapport, your service is unmatched, they will do business with you and they will do business at the cost of making more money, okay? So remember that, guys. Now, number four, this is extremely important, guys, so important. Give yourself a reasonable timeline. We talked about this earlier in the video. Man, I I'm telling y'all, timelines are so important. I did a whole video on this. Uh, I believe it was Overcoming Objections Round 3, where I was doing this with my team, and the guy said, hey, I wanna close up my own title company. If you wanna rewatch that video, Click the little link above my head and I guarantee it you'll get value from that. We talked about different objections that you can overcome and one of them was about timeline. And so guys, a lot of people in this business, I see this happen so often, they give themselves way too little time and because of that, they're unable to perform. And just so y'all know and understand this, that makes you look like a shitty person. When somebody puts their trust in you and they say, hey, Q, we're gonna sell you our property. We need this money so that we can take care of ourselves and our family and you don't perform, my dude, you are literally the reason why people label wholesalers as shitty people. I promise you this. So if you're watching this, I need you to think about your resources before you even start cold calling. I want you to create a kit of service, okay? And what does this look like? A kit of service is the amount of resources that you can gather that will completely increase your chances of closing on a property and giving somebody a realistic timeline. Every wholesaler should have this in their arsenal. A reputable title company that they've closed deals at. If, you're, if you haven't closed a deal yet and you're watching this, I get it. Use the credibility of somebody, mirror somebody, everybody in every area, in, in, in any part of the state has someone that they can fall back on. I truly believe that there's a mentor in your area right now if you're watching this. If not, join my Surface program. Bro, Surface is literally where we get things going and we expedite the shit out of this process so that you can learn how to close more deals. I'll leave a link to that in the description if you're wanting to be a part of the academy. We have so many videos. We, I, I meet with you guys personally two weeks every single fucking week and we just hit the ground running. Today we're talking about creative finance. Tomorrow we're gonna be doing sales training. We're doing all kinds of things here, okay? That's not the point. Don't care if y'all join, okay? I would love to have y'all, but this isn't a sell. I'm giving you guys valuable information that you can use so that you can close more deals free on my channel. Go through all of these videos that I got before you pay for anything I have to sell, okay? So that's number one, because I don't need your money, but I would love for you to become successful. If you can tell me that you did it because of my fucking channel, great. I love you, dude. Keep kicking ass. I believe in you. If you're watching this, I believe in you. So keep kicking ass. But where a lot of people don't do is they don't build that kit out that they need. That credibility kit, that reputation kit, the resource kit. You need a title company. If there's someone in your area that is doing deals, partner with that person and create more credibility for yourself, okay? You need a reputable attorney who can vouch for the type of business that you do. Find a mentor who has one if you do not have one. You also, guys, this is so important, you need some sort of website, something that the sellers can be driven to where they can know what's up. If you guys go to infinitycashoffer.com, you see what we provide. We get virtual offers. We don't even step foot in people's doors anymore, man. We're literally buying these things without even seeing them. Those are processes and systems that we created because of COVID-19 because everybody in this fucking place is fear-mongering and everybody's at home and all this crazy shit. I have a very, very controversial opinion in regards to everything that's happening. It's all good. But like I said, man, there's a lot of things that are going on. We pivoted off of it and saw it as an opportunity when everybody was staying at home and when everybody was crying to figure out a way to create a, 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 a credibility or a resource kit that would allow for us to still buy properties without even seeing them, without giving somebody COVID. We took the... The, 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 the mindset of our client and we adapted to it. So who is your seller and what do they need? 
You need somebody on your team who can also find a place to go for your clients. If you don't have an apartment locator, you need one. If you don't have a realtor on your team, you need one. These are just some basic tips so that you guys can have the resources to give to the client. And that's going to give you the timeline. If the seller tells you and you created that rapport that they need 45 days before they sell the property, well then guess what, y'all? Guess what? Guys, now you have that 45 day timeline. What is it that you need? And I can accommodate it. You need a moving, you need help moving because you're too old? I got you. Moving company in my back pocket. You need a place to go because you don't know where to go? Got you. We'll put you into a hotel and we set you up with our apartment locator. If you want to move to an apartment, I got you. You want to use the money so that you can buy another property? Well, then let's find you another property. I put you in contact with my realtor and my realtor can execute on that for you so that when we close on this deal, you're already going to your next house. Guys, that is the level of service that you have to be thinking about. And that goes hand in hand with creating those realistic timelines. And so guys, you know, that, that's where I see a lot of people mess up. Those are the four things that I wanted to go over today. And man, look, you know, there, there a lot of things are happening right now in, in the world and in, in society and with people and your ability to be able to connect with the client has never been more important ever, ever. And especially being sensitive to what's going on. Now, I don't believe half the shit that's going on. But I, like I said, I have controversial opinions. I'll probably do another video on that. But guys, I'll tell y'all right now, one thing is certain. The three things, the three laws to how you can close more deals is revolved around service, impression, and cash. If you can bring all three of those things to the table, I got no doubt in my mind that you watching this right now aren't gonna be super fucking successful in this business. So guys, I really appreciate y'all watching this all the way through. As always, make sure you subscribe and tune into the next episode. I hope you guys got value from this, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Thank you guys very much. I love y'all. I want to check. No